The universe's biggest questions require the universe's biggest brains. This is Don. This is Tom. This is Big Brain. Welcome to Big Brain, the universe's foremost knowledge-seeking program of intellect and high IQ debate. Question one. Is it ethically wrong to tinkle in the shower? What a question, what a debate. Something that's crossed all of our minds at some point, I'm sure. You're in the shower, it's warm. You feel the urge to take a little tinkle. But I shouldn't. It's a, it's a question of basic hygiene. I, as someone who has to share the shower, do not want to be t stepping in other people's urine. And so you show them the same courtesy? It's disrespectful, yes. What if you could be certain without reasonable doubt that all of the pee is washed away and they're not actually making any contact with pee at any point? I think if, you know, people come in with hazmat suits and they sterilize the shower after I've done my tinkle because of the obscene amount of energy drinks I drink mm -hmm. and it needs, a good, it needs a good sterilization, who gives a fuck? It's gone, you know? There's no magic aura of piss that stays around after it's been deep cleaned. Okay, try, try it with the shoe on the other foot. So imagine that you're using a shower after me. Yes. And you know that I had a bunch of asparagus. Yeah. But now you are barefoot having to step onto that same porcelain that you know was getting blasted with asparagus piss a moment ago. But you don't care. You'll just do it anyway because you know it was deep cleaned. Yes. Okay. Are we not men of reason? <laughs> would you be... Uh, would you be not a little annoyed with me, though? I would think you're a bit of an unkempt beast, but it would make me question you in other facets, like what else is he unhygienically spraying about or doing? Sure, but you, but, but you have no intuition that I'm, like, disgustingly slighting you in any way. It's more just about me and my own... Well, thought. now we're adding elements. Are we, in this situation, amicable? <laughs> is this a blatant sign of your disrespect towards me? But how am I disrespecting you? Because it, it's like... Well, because it's about intent. Okay. If you're doing it like, eh, fuck you, Tom, <laughs> then yeah, obviously I know that you're trying to send me a message of ill harm. But how am, I how am I how am I effectively sending the message? It's almost like if someone uh, if someone graffitied someone else's house, yeah, but then it was painted and fixed before they ever saw it, and the guy graffitiing it knew that was going to happen. It's going to be painted and fixed before they ever saw yeah. it. Yeah. Well, if it, like, do you but, really care? Like, well, you need to set out the boundaries of the relationship there. Right. Is this someone I know? Is this someone I like? Was this done with my permission? Were they trying to send me a message? Mm -hmm. If someone just did that to my property, obviously I'd be pissed off because they're violating my private property without my permission. Mm -hmm. But if we're housemates and we both know the cleaning team's coming, I would have a ball in that shower. But have they violated I would be it? shitting, pissing, farting, coming, and generally having a jolly good time in that shower, and no one could stop me. <laughs> but have they violated it if everyone knows it's going to be cleaned up perfectly right after they do it? Yes, of course they are. But why? Like, why does it actually matter? So again, as someone who doesn't know this is going to happen, and someone's violating my property without my permission, I cannot infer that no damage is done because now my assumption of my safety is being questioned. But he's also, like, retarded. You know? I, don't, I, get, I get angry at retards all the time. <laughs> <laughs> just, because the, just because they're simpler, doesn't mean they can't have hatred in their hearts so, so towards for, me. For example, there's a guy. Imagine a guy's like, I, oh. I, I deep faked, I deep faked your face on a oh. on gay porn, and, and but then I deleted it. You know, so it's like I did this thing you wouldn't like, but then I, then it was like, deleted. well, you know, now you're making assumptions. Okay. Oh, we don't know that he deleted it. We don't know that I wouldn't like it. <laughs> well, who is this magical retard who goes? <laughs> Deep faking your face onto gay porn and then deleting it. That sounds whimsical to me. That sounds like fun. I kind of love this guy. Maybe it was a bad example. Hi, guy, do do it. Hey, do do it. He's like, he's just har harmless having fun. <laughs> uh -huh. But no harm intended. Click delete. I like that guy. Okay. So I would let him piss in my shower. Excellent. Before you. Well, I, I, I'll, con I'll concede that it's probably irrational if you know without a shadow of a doubt that there's no piss to be upset about stepping in the shower. Just like you basically know for sure whenever you move into a house that people have pissed in every shower, you know? But it's been cleaned, so it's like, what are you gonna do? I would like to raise the point that I do not urinate in the shower. And mm -hmm. if I had lived in your house, and only me, your, your shower would be crystal clean, apart from gallons of cum. <laughs>
but urine free it would be. Okay, so that's interesting. So definitely come in the shower all the time that your guests use and everyone else in your house uses. No, I come in my own shower, private shower. <laughs> I wouldn't come in the guest shower. That's, you know, uncouth. Okay. I wouldn't force my semen on someone else. So you come in the shower that you it. share with your wife, but you don't pee in the shower that you share with your Correct. wife. Similarly to not pissing on your wife during sex, presumably. Correct. But coming all over your wife during sex. But honestly, this is nothing to do with my respect or unrespect towards my wife. It is merely that the reward of coming is too delightful a gift to myself to deny. Hmm. And I can't stop it. Whereas urine, I'm like, I can hold that. I don't need to be an animal. Okay, so independent of personal preference, though, would you declare coming in the shower ethical where pee is not? Or is it just, again... It's all the same the if the deep thing. clean is there. If the deep clean well, is there not... There is no deep clean. You're sharing the shower. Well, then, yeah, life. I'm not, you know... So it's not particularly I mean, I nice. am, but I'm not, you know? Phyllis, morally, I'm not going to. But realistically, I absolutely am. <laughs> <laughs> Why Why is uh, Why does the convenience of coming in the shower outweigh the convenience of peeing in the shower versus having to dry yourself off? Because the it's a little treat for me. But I don't have to have the mental energy diverted towards cooming in a tissue where you have mm. to kind of like pause the act a bit, make sure you don't fucking miss and hit the wall or dribble it somewhere you won't find it and then... Your wife fucking like finds it and that's awkward. It's like a little upgrade. It's like a little business class, you know? Fair enough. So we're both agreed that it's unethical. Yes, but I'll do it anyway. But yes, as a side note, you'll do it anyway. Myself. Fair enough. Okay. Big brain. <laughs> you know where that hand's been now. <laughs> Question two. Would you rather smash an alien or a predator? Predator. Predator. Well, let's talk about it. It's so obvious. Okay. Everyone right now has a clear image in their head of why this is so obvious. Are you imagining a second, like, weird? No, its mouth literally looks like a pussy. Okay. But it's got a bunch of teeth in it. Well, okay. that's what a big fucking hammer's for. Okay, so you capture the predator. You punch it right in its stupid fucking jaw. You knock its teeth out. Several times. Yeah, you... Is it a female predator or a male predator? Doesn't matter. Okay, here's what you do. You tranquilize the predator. <laughs> you pull out its teeth with pliers. You have the time of your life. Job done, big brain. Okay, that's raping an alien or predator. But let's imagine there's a way to consensually have sex with a predator or... I refuse. There's only one way this is happening. Why? I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> to follow the spirit of the question, you have to choose alien or predator. Yeah. And you're assuming, at least from their end, it's consensual. You're well, being, then the teeth don't matter. You're then. being forced to fuck one of them, that, but either of them will fuck you back consensually. Well, th I mean, yeah, it's either or. I don't care. I could, I could do both. I don't believe you. You have to choose. You're probably going to choose one some percentage more often than the other. Yeah, they're both ladies, because the lady alien's a queen, and I'm a king, mm. so kind of need her in my life. Oh, the alien queen has that little slurp machine that like drops eggs. You know what I'm talking about? Ah, <laughs> oh, damn. I didn't even think about that. It's basically, if it's consensual, it goes, it falls down to this. Predator pussy mouth, mm -hmm. alien egg slurpy thingy. Or you could just fuck a face hugger, because that's basically also a pussy. Regular alien goop goop mouth. Which, and if you remember, they have like, literally, like gallons of um, the like lube. They like dribble lube. Oh, that's true. I just feel like these are all great options. If I had to pick one, probably that slurp slurp. <laughs> Yeah. The, she's, she's like a... The egg laying hole? Yeah, dude. Okay. She's like a, well... <laughs> I don't want to discount myself. I like to back myself, but right. that thing is used for laying eggs like this big. Yeah, so... Am I a well-endowed man? Absolutely. But am I well-endowed enough to reach the even the walls of that thing? I don't think so. So you get in there and you're disappointed. It's going to feel like someone found a pair of trousers from the 70s in a swamp. That'll be the exact feeling. 
<laughs> I do like the idea of her like crouched over me doing that thing that women can't do for very long because they don't have any muscles in their legs. Oh yeah, the, the kind of like squat yeah, thing. Yeah, with her little like, Yeah, that's pretty cool. That would be sick, but I do think she's going to be too big. I think she'd be scratchy. Like no matter what she does, even though she's consensual and cares about you and is trying to like caress you and be nice, she's all like pointy. I've, uh, the problem is too is she's so f domineering physically, I feel like she would have to get me in the Amazonian position and I'm not sure if my ego could handle that. What's it, for, for the viewer, what's the... Uh... It's where the dude, he's like this and his, his dick is like this. Uh, okay, yeah, and they're kind of fucking you with your own dick. You're like this and they're there just like... <laughs> 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 but I don't know if I could handle it. Yeah, I think you're right with the scale too. Like that would be inevitable, you know? I feel like that would be one of those moments where I'm all about it because I'm all fucking revved up from the slop slop. And then right afterwards, I can't look at myself in the mirror because I let this alien queen dominate me so thoroughly. So you're a predator. Well, there's still the aliens and the face huggers. I think the face hugger would be the ultimate fucking goop goop 9000. I think it doesn't have the anatomy to not give teeth. No, the, the uh, face huggers don't have teeth. Don't they? No, it's just like, it's like a, a little fucking like sea urchin thing. It's no, it's like a, if memory serves, it's like a little flesh sleeve and it okay. deposits eggs in your throat. Yeah, but how does it latch on? It's got its legs, right? But yeah, the I legs wrap the around mouth, the head. I oh my mouth. god, dude, that'd be sick. It fucking wraps its little fingers around your butt. <laughs> it's fucking tickling your asshole whilst like... <laughs> and it's, and it's, and it's, yeah, it's like pumping itself on. Yeah, oh, oh my god. And it's got no the little effort. tail thing. So it's just like... <laughs> tickle, tickle, tickle. I don't think that could be topped, honestly. I feel like including the face huggers. Bro, we're done. This no, it's against the spirit of the question. What? Oh, come on. You, ha it ha you have to oh, do- Oh, it's too perfect. No, yeah. <laughs> it has to be Xenomorph or Predator. You just don't want me to be happy. No. I'm going with Pussy Throat because the alien has all the problems of the Predator with none of the benefits. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the Predator at least is less bestial. Maybe a boring layer, might be starfish and feel like the, the, the alien's gonna thrash about a bit at least, but... <laughs> the, plus the mouth has already demonstrated such, such vaginal layers that I feel like it's a safer bet anyway. Hmm. Both, if both creatures are consenting, I feel like it has more faculties to be considerate of its teeth than the alien on your soft human cock. That's true. So, gonna, gonna have to go with Predator. So I smash the Predator. Yeah. I hope that helps. <laughs> Big brain. Numero three-o. Would it be better to be gay but only allowed to fuck women, or lesbian but only allowed to fuck men? Well, let's, let's start with it. Let's, let's, let's break the question apart. So. Yes. Which would, which would you rather be, man or woman? Indubitably. Which gender in, is pretending this... more? Do you think gay guys are pretending to be gay more, or are lesbians pretending to be lesbians more? Because we all know it's made up, and everyone's secretly straight. I don't trust lesbians. Okay, let's unpack that. <laughs> Here's the game plan. You be a gay man. You're only allowed to fuck women. But who said anything about getting fucked against your will? Can you put yourself in situations where it is likely someone will molest you? I go, I go and Go put, get raped by a, a guy. Well, it's not rape, but technically. The you guy put yourself in a precarious. Yeah, you put yourself in a precarious situation. Don't fuck me. Sure would hate if I got pounded real hard right now. I think it's against the spirit of the question, though. I think he, like, pulls down your pants and goes for a butt your butthole and then a. Force and field he singes explodes. his cock off. Yeah. That would be awesome though. So now you're going around killing gay guys. Well, okay. Gay rapists. I just said it would be cool. I'm not saying <laughs> I'd commit hate crimes with it. <laughs> Men have been fucking putting up and dealing with women that I don't really like for millennia. I don't think it'd be that hard. <laughs> which which do you think you could derive more satisfaction from? Gay man that has to fuck women or lesbian that has to fuck men? I think that men 
are way more capable of just being like fucking thirsty animals. So you could talk yourself into you're basically fucking a dude when it's a woman. You did not even that, but just like something's on my dick making it feel good. Maybe it's a face hugger, like you know, as long as it's doing the job. But you have to extend it the other way. So as a man, do you feel like if you're forced to fuck a dude, you could get off just by imagining it's a woman? Yeah, but if I'm never allowed to fuck women ever again. Right. Well, I suppose some men certainly do in prison. That's what I'm saying. Right. You get us in the right situation and our software changes. Mm. You know? You get, you get in that testosterone filled environment and suddenly you, you're sniffing pheromones you never sniffed before and things change. Mm -hmm. Take away our access to women or men. I don't know if it works the other way. Maybe gay guys are inherently different, who knows? But think about it, right? A woman, I feel like women have to be somewhat more emotionally invested when they're having sex. Mm -hmm. You You have to like, Take them right. out for dinners and be nice to them. You're going to be Sahara deserted up and you're just going right. to turn to toys instead. Whereas with a dude, I got a woman could fucking like hate me. Hate me with all she could be the most mean, vicious bitch of a person to me. And I would absolutely still have sex with her. Here's a potentially interesting question. Do you think that the average woman would agree with our assessment? Or do you think they would choose to be a lesbian? That's the fuck well, man. they're not the ones with the brains, so <laughs> they don't get a pity. I don't know. What do women really think? Who knows? Well, they want to be men, obviously. Penis envy. It's true. Even I have penis envy of other men. Okay, so gay guy that has to fuck women? Yeah, it just seems like the obvious option, doesn't it? <sighs> it's a little too easy, Patreon. You guys gotta come with the hard hitters. Big brain. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. <laughs>Uh, what easy peasy questions those were. Now time to get on to the real heavy hitters. Life advice, where we help you become a better person by solving your problems. Hey Tom, hey Don, this is Justin, also known as Chuckles. I have a question for you. How do I overcome my fear of time passing? Wow, what a problem it sounds like you have, my friend. Well, interesting fact about time is it passes faster when you are doing the same thing every single day. So my advice, good sir, is to vary your existence up as much as humanly possible to extend the length of time. And apart from that, there's nothing you can do except hurtle frighteningly towards your inevitable end. What should our friend do to vary his time? Change the game you're playing on Steam, buddy. Mmm. Yeah, go for go for the humble bumble. Hum, humble bundle? That's like five games for five dollars. It's a good deal. Try and teach yourself to suck your own dick. Because if you can do, actually that's the worst advice ever. Time will pass so much quicker if you could do that on command. <laughs> if anything, maybe you need to go the other direction and not engage in any sexual activity at all. Here's what you should do. You should take a bowl of soup and you should microwave it for three minutes at a time. Time never goes slower than when you're trying to wait for a microwave to be done. As Soon as it's out, put it back in. You will literally live forever. You'll be like some sort of eldritch time god if you just microwave soup over and over and over again. That all makes sense to me, Tom. Big brain. Hey, Tom and Don. <laughs> my name is Calvin, and my question is, what's a guaranteed way I can win any debate? <laughs> what a gift that would be. I sure wish I could do that. I think the only route one can take to win any debate is through violence. <laughs> What if they're more violent than you? You are just gonna have to become the peak, peak of violence. What if they have a gun? Well, that's part of violence. I just don't think this is very foolproof. If you don't have a brain the size of ours, the only way you're gonna win a debate is if you are the most violent and scary. Because <laughs> then people don't want to debate you in the first place. And then when you they say, you know, they say something, you guys get a disagreement, and you're like, well, I don't agree with that. <laughs> they're gonna be like, and you're like, they're gonna fucking. They're not, they're not gonna challenge you. To win the debate, I think there has to be a general. What is winning a debate? Well, there has to be a general perception of he won. Well, there would be. Okay. By the person who's too scared. Let, let, let's no, debate. You'd be like, let's, dang it. You just, let, well, let's. Won't hear hear my out my cool ideas, you know. Let's role play. Okay. You present an argument. I think I'm better than you, Tom. Okay. Now. 
Put yourself in a situation where you seriously think I am going to violently hurt you <laughs> if you disagree with me. Would okay? Would you say that to me? This is the Soviet Union all over again, dude. Uh, all right. You can't speak the truth because you're gonna get shot. You know. I'm not saying that. His history remembers that all the people were afraid to say that they're better than Tom. Who's gonna write the history when I have a gun to their head? But that doesn't last forever. Oh, you're just well. temporarily forced. I don't. You're forestalling the inevitable conclusion that you When I die, I cease to care. I've won every debate until my death. <laughs> I've conquered, I've come out on top, I've conquered the world. I win, big brain. Okay, what happens when, again, you come up, so role play, I'm big and scary, and I have, I, and I have okay, a gun. It's gotta be believable. <laughs> and I have a gun. It's a big, scary gun. What? For 45? Uh-oh. Okay, and, and I have you surrounded with all my friends with guns. I fucking, I, I'm like, uh, what's that one with- uh, John, John Wick. No, that's gay. <laughs> what's the one with- uh, uh, Equilibrium. I'm Equilibrium. <laughs> <laughs> debate one. So to always win a debate, you have to be Equilibrium. You have to learn Gung Fu. You have to be Equilibrium. <laughs> you have to learn Gung Fu. That's my approach. If you've got something different, by all means. Or what if uh, you're surrounded by tanks? Then I would uh, intimidate them like the uh, tank man guy who stood in front of the tanks and made all the tanks stop. He got run over. Well, that just proves my initial point. Oh, <laughs> you're dead and now you don't care. Yeah, who won that? No, yeah. no, more the like sure violence, doesn't care. violence won the debate. So what I'm saying is what happens when a force comes along that's sufficiently more violent than you and forces you to lie and just accept defeat when- It's when still- violence. It's still the truth, though, that the violence wins. Okay, but you no, know, but we're, the question is, how do you guarantee that you win every You have day? to be in the tank. And if okay, you're, but you, but you're you going up always, against a tank bus, you, you have to be, be in the plane. The, you can't always be in the tank. Okay, well, then I don't how, know if you're or, trying hard enough. <laughs> well, what would you do, Mr. Big Brain? Well, I guess if you include violence as a way of winning a debate, then there is no way to guarantee that you're always right. Because... There's always potential for that to happen. But if you exclude the possibility of violence and you make it just about like a verbal debate, which is probably the spirit of the question, then You're real hung up on the spirit of the question this episode. <sighs> I'm just I'm just tired of all these this negativity of people thinking we don't thoroughly suss these things out, because we do. And I'm trying to show you. Okay. So in the spirit of the question, you can't coerce the other person with violence. How mm. do you win a debate every time? What does it mean to win a debate? God knows no one ever says, oh, you're right, actually. I think what you think now. So I think the closest you can reasonably come to win a debate is when they say, oh, that's interesting. I'll have to think about that more. Classic. Then you win. That is true. That is the marker of victory. So how do you get there every time? Gish gallop. Gish gallop? It's when you present so many arguments in such quick succession that the other person can't possibly hope to respond to them. That's a good point. You make up studies and articles and you refer to them vaguely and you make up 20 at a time. And then when they say like, well, can I see these studies? You say, oh, it's not my job to do your research for you. It's out there, go find it. But what if you come up against an opponent who knows that gish galloping and they say, stop gish galloping right now, mister. When I will use science now, when I will use proof, Studies, my poll. Well, what if someone's like, I've read all those, I've read every study, and then you say, and then you say <laughs> prove it. I've read every study. Yeah, I've read every right? study, and you made that up, and then you say prove it. Well, maybe that's, okay, maybe that's, oh, then you say prove it. That's prove the, it. That's the second Uno reverse cards. The first one is, I've read every study on the internet. <laughs> that's how you win debates, but then you might say, well, prove it, and then he can't prove it. So, yeah, you, you just say, you prove it. <laughs> so, you gish gallop. Gish galloping will work on 99% people. The 1%, they say, that's not true. You say, prove it. And they can't because those articles don't exist. But you can claim they're out there somewhere. But if they you, say, prove it back. If they say, prove it back, then you resort back to violence. Big brain. Ow! See? Well, Tom, that was a quite riveting debate this week. I, for one, am rock hard. Not yet. But perhaps I will be if you follow us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or the YouTube playlist or anywhere else you listen to a podcast. You can listen to us argue about such classics as... What was the last time? If... 
Uh, <laughs> wow, <laughs> truly riveting. Well, we'll see you later. Have a good day and and um, Godspeed. Patreon, Patreon, Patreon. <laughs> All questions for this program were submitted by our patrons. If you're in dire need to have your question answered by Tom and Don in the next episode, sign up now and submit your question today. Link in the description.